Okay, in this lecture, we're going to start looking at what is a power amplifier or a PA. In particular, what's different about a power amplifier than other types of amplifiers? For instance, we also have a type of amplifier called a low noise amplifier, uh, and we want to find out why, what's different about a PA than something like an LNA. I would say that the primary difference between a PA and other types of amplifiers is that a PA is designed to deliver a specific amount of power into a load with high energy efficiency. So what we're saying here is that parameters like gain and noise figure are still important in power amplifiers, but they're secondary to other considerations like the peak output power and the energy efficiency of the amplifier. A power amplifier or PA is typically designed as the interface to the antenna, so it's typically designed to drive an antenna. What's important about this is that the antenna impedance is not fixed and can vary with the environment. So typically an antenna impedance might be designed to have a nominal impedance of 50 ohms when it's perfectly isolated from the environment, but as we change the environment of an antenna, for instance, we walk around with it on a cell phone, moving next to metal buildings, uh, over grass fields, the impedance is gonna vary quite a bit from 50 ohms. And lastly, we're going to note that a power amplifier is a large signal circuit. So assumptions that we've made in the past when we've done amplifier design uh, in early electronics courses and maybe even early RF courses are that the uh, amplifiers that we're looking at are, have small signal swings. Power amplifiers have large signal swings, and when you have large signal swings, oftentimes the bias point moves because the uh, large signal uh, swing can lead to distortion or to variations in the gain uh, of the amplifier. So we can't use small signal simulations for power amplifiers like we did in the past, and small signal simulations include things like AC simulations or S-parameter simulations, and instead we must use large signal simulations, things like transient simulations, periodic steady state, harmonic balance, and we can uh, combine S parameters with these uh, periodic steady state and harmonic balance uh, simulations if we want to understand the frequency response of a power amplifier. Okay, so as we start to look at power amplifiers, let's look at the characteristic of a power amplifier. So the ideal characteristic of a power amplifier would be something like a linear characteristic, like I'm drawing here. At any given power level at the input, P in at the input, we would measure some P out at the output. And ideally, as we increase the input power, the output power would follow linearly proportionally by some gain factor, and this would be the power gain. Now you'll note that this characteristic is done on a log log scale, power in and power out are both plotted in dBm, and dBm means 20 log 10, sorry, 10 log 10 of the input power in milliwatts. So an ideal amplifier, the output power is equal to the gain in dB plus the input power in dBm. And as I said before, as the input is increased or decreased, the output changes by the same proportional factor. Now, if we were to look at a real amplifier, what tends to happen is the red characteristic that I'm drawing here tends to saturate at high power, and it might also compress a bit at low power. And the reasons for this saturation behavior tend to do with the supply voltage. So for instance, the supply voltage may be limited uh, and that limits the, um, the, the voltage swing uh, of the amplifier and also internal device characteristics may uh, limit or saturate as internal currents become big. Okay, so now we're gonna zoom in on the peak output of the char characteristic a bit, and I'm going to exaggerate this, but we have that our ideal characteristic uh, in green here, uh, and we have our less than ideal characteristic in red, and we can see that the two are diverging. Now, when the red characteristic reaches its maximum value, we tend to call this the saturated output power, or PSAT of the amplifier. 
and at some point lower than that where the ideal curve varies from the measured curve or simulated curve by 1 dB, we call this the P1dB point of the amplifier. The saturated output power is the level at which uh, as we uh, increase the uh, input power uh, more and more, we don't get any more output power out. So uh, in other words, the characteristic completely flattens out. The P1dB is the power level at which the output power is 1 dB less than it would be if the amplifier were ideal. Uh, and this is generally uh, where we operate linear PAs. I should say this is generally where we operate linear PAs at less than their P1dB, uh, and the more below their P1dB, the more linear they are. And we'll discuss more on linearity in just a, uh, just a bit.